Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Today, Richard and I are going to talk about things we saw and heard at this year's G2E, which stands for Global Gaming Expo. and It is the casinos industry's annual biggest trade show before we get to that um sunday night there's an awful shooting here in las vegas uh the guy was supposed to be a video poker player i've uh i've received 20 questions of did i know the guy the answer is no Never heard of him. Uh, first I heard of him was after he was dead. Uh, they said he played $100 video poker, which is a very unusual amount. It is possible. But $125 is more likely. Whatever reporter first said $100 was picked up by all the reporters after that. But the first guy probably didn't know what he was talking about. It is possible with, for example... Uh, $1.10 play Ultimate X or $5 multi-strike. But for every one game of that, a casino is going to have 5 or 10 or 20, uh, $25 single line games, which is $125 a pop. So anyway, I don't know what the guy played. I have no idea if he's an advantage player or not. Uh, I keep getting those questions, so... Presumably some of you had those questions, so that's all I know. Yeah, the most common question I get is, did Bob know him? <laughs> and then, yeah. or, or they also ask if I knew him. Um, I, there's been a lot of talk uh, among players. Nobody I know seems to know the guy. So it makes me uh, highly suspect that he was actually a an advantage player. Um, or, well, I shouldn't say that. I... Uh, it makes me highly suspect that he was playing for a living uh, just because uh, I think there are some wealthy people who play with an advantage occasionally. Um, and maybe he was one of those. I don't know. Uh, they're claiming he was, but it just seems with as many people that we know in the professional gambling circuit, it, it would be surprising if nobody knew the guy, if he was actually a, um, you know, a top pro. So, but I'm sure as we go along, we'll hear more. There's a lot of stuff coming out that, uh, you know, you hear one day and it's false the next. So, um, but. And yeah. part of, part of it is I don't play on the strip. Uh, some of it is intentionally and some of it is I'm not welcome at a lot of the places there. So, uh, well, also, he lived in places that were not conducive to high-level video poker play. Um, you know, he lived down in Florida in a place. I mean, they have casinos down there, but not conducive to high-level play. Uh, Reno and then uh, most recently Mesquite. So um, I guess he could be a video poker player that travels a lot to play. but Yeah, but Mesquite's only 90 miles away. So uh, you could live in Mesquite and come to Vegas regularly if you wanted to, easily enough. All right, let's move on. Uh, On Monday of this week, before the the exhibition hall at the G2E opened up, there were educational seminars. Richard and I spent some time in the surveillance seminars. Partly because um, we have a lot of guests who uh, periodically file lawsuits, and it's frequently somebody in security or surveillance who did something wrong. And so we kind of wanted to understand the other side before we um, – it helps us to get more round, well-rounded approach. And the last – so I needed to write up two of them. And I did. If you go to uh, cdcgamingreports.com, you can see my what I wrote and what Richard wrote. But well, in the, I, uh, I, I haven't. I, I should just uh, uh, clarify that I did write um, a kind of a long interview with 
Lou Di Gregorio, who has a new shuffling machine called Shark Trap, um, that that is really quite interesting. We'll talk more about that um, a, a little later in the show. Um, but uh, as far as my write-ups about the seminars and what I saw on the floor, those are not out yet, and they'll be coming within the next week. And in addition, I plan to uh, probably post something at uh, gamblingwithanedge.com on things that uh, you know, that are more appropriate for that, uh, place uh, than CDC. I mean, it's a different audience. So exactly. Uh, yeah. But one of the, uh, seminars, Rich and I both went to more seminars than we're going to write about, but one that I went to and he didn't was the last one of the day. And it had to do with, uh, Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 37E. Now, I'm sure you know that off the top of your head. Now, what that has to do with is using electronic data in lawsuits, in litigation. And electronic data includes on the casino side anything from various cameras or also internal emails or texts or anything on an iPad, anything that was electronic. And on the player side, or the plaintiff side, uh, anything you've done on social media is subpoenable. Anything you have emailed or texted is subpoenable. If you texted it or tweeted it and then deleted it, then the presumption is that you deleted something that was incriminating to yourself. So if there is an event that you are in where you're likely to sue a casino for some reason, the last thing you want to be doing now is to be writing about this on uh, in emails or text or posting it on YouTube or talking about it online because that is all subpoenable and uh, – Unless you're really, really savvy and thinking it through and you know all the laws in this particular respect, it's very easy that you could screw up your case inadvertently before it even got started. So be very, very careful about social media. People frequently post on social media when they're mad as hell and want to say something about it, and that's absolutely the worst time to do it. It's bad for the president, and it's bad for you. So, uh, so don't do that. So, Richard, you were in these uh, seminars, too. Did you get anything out of it that you think our listeners would like to know? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Um, you know, the first one that I went to was called Scams, Cheats, and Blacklists, Current Fraud and Casino Crimes. And, um, you know, some of that was uh, quite entertaining, watching, um, you know, most uh, criminals are knuckleheads. And so he had a lot of entertaining video of... Uh, people committing crimes, one very famous one um, at the Bellagio where they robbed the Rolex store. Um, you know, a pig, a wolf, and a sheep walk into the Bellagio with sledgehammers in their hand, and uh, they were wearing these masks straight out of a movie, and just walked up and smashed the glass door, go in and start, the store was closed, smash the counters, and they're stealing the Rolexes, uh, the pig who's standing guard outside in the hallway, uh, he decides he doesn't want to be left out, so he starts trying to break the front window, and apparently that's bulletproof glass, so he he just couldn't make a dent in it. Um, you know, they, they ended up... Now, these uh, geniuses left their car in the Bellagio parking lot running with the keys in the ignition, and uh, they were in the store five or six minutes, um, well, some good Samaritan sees the car running with the keys in it and thinks, oh, some poor person left their keys in their car. They turn off the car and take the keys inside to give to security. And uh, so now the bandits go running out to the parking lot, <laughs> find that their car no longer has keys. They can't get it started. Uh, they try to hijack somebody in the parking lot who just drives away. So now they go running out of the parking lot and they take off their masks and sort of blend into the crowd on the strip, except for the pig who decides to hide in some bushes. And uh, 
While guess, still wearing his pig mask. Yeah, and I guess when the police arrived, some people pointed out, hey, there's a guy in a pig mask hiding in those bushes. So uh, he was the only guy that was caught in the whole mess. Uh, but one thing I thought was really interesting is he showed a case of a guy who was playing a slot machine called Haystacks. And this particular slot has a bonus state where you accumulate, I don't know what you accumulate, I think you accumulate hay in the hayloft or something. And when you reach the bonus, this lady farmer comes and starts shoveling the hay out of the, out of the hayloft. Um, well, it turned out that some people had discovered that when you reach this bonus round, if you put money into the machine at that point, you could now start playing the machine and it would not deduct anything from your balance. And you could just rack up money. Um... Now, the guy that they showed, they videotaped, this guy, he put the money in the machine when the bonus round happened, and now he held his hand over the glass where it showed his balance so that no one would notice that nothing was being deducted every time he spun the reel. Well, uh, they were watching this guy. Now, the reason they were watching him is apparently there were some people... (laughs) <laughs> some knuckleheads discussing this on an open forum and surveillance people read these open forums and some of the surveillance people started notifying everybody, hey, watch out for this problem on this haystacks machine. So when this guy was playing, they were they had close-ups of him and close-ups of him holding his hand over the screen and uh, they arrested him. Now, um, originally, and this is in Las Vegas, the DA declined to prosecute the case, and gaming said, we want to come talk to you about this because we think you should prosecute it. And gaming went and had a meeting with the DA, and the DA changed his mind and said, okay, we're going to prosecute it, and they got a conviction. Now, this is a room that was full of security and surveillance people and risk management and one of the people in the audience said why is that illegal and uh what the gaming control agent said is that there is a law uh that says that if you have nothing at risk if you are not wagering any money then you, then that is illegal. To win money without wagering any money is illegal, according to him. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to have Bob uh, Nersessian on uh, probably in November. And uh, I talked to him today, and I said I'd like him to come on to talk about this and a few other things. And uh, he said he would. So, um, yeah, it, it seems to me that if even the surveillance people wa- are wondering why this would be illegal... I was certainly wondering why it was illegal. Um, so anyway, that, that was the uh, the most interesting part of that that particular seminar, I think. Did anybody suggest that free play on if you're picking up free play at some casinos, you have to salt the machine, you have to put in a, you have to use your own money to put in the first bet. But at many casinos, if you have fifty dollars of free play, you put it in and you just play it off. Yeah, you cannot actually, possibly lose. Actually, somebody did say exactly that. <laughs> and he said, well, I'll talk to you offline and uh, or afterwards. And afterwards, I was there when the guy asked him about it. And he said, well, that doesn't count. I mean, you know, <laughs> all very official, right? And oh, see, the whole thing seemed very wishy-washy. I mean, I felt more like this guy was giving his opinion than what, than what the actual fact, <laughs> you know? So, um yeah, that that's that's why I think it'd be good to have Bob Nersessian on to talk about this stuff. Yeah, there were a couple of cases in the seminars I went to where they would say something, and I was like, they were talking about trespassing, and I said, well, when the casino changes names or changes owners, then the trespasses all go away. And he goes, no, they don't. Yeah. And and so like. Several times, Bob Nersessian on this show has mentioned, yes, they do. 
but I didn't have the uh, I, I didn't want to make a scene in, in the seminar but um, but this surveillance guy didn't think that mattered and Bob Nersessian says yes it does so well, one of the other guys in one of the seminars said that in Nevada trespasses are only good for six months and after six months you can't arrest somebody you just have to re-trespass them now I had never heard that one before either and I have no idea if that's true we can ask Bob Nersessian about it that would be useful so now, I can get back, back at the riverside down in Laughlin. Yeah. Um, also, um, someone uh, that I spoke to there at the seminar said that um, by law, only the owner or someone else is allowed to trespass you. A security guard is not legally allowed to trespass you, or, or an, it, it, it's not going to stick. And basically... He had a trespassing arrest, and it was thrown out when they brought up that this law that it has to be the owner or one other person. So this is another thing we'll, we'll um, you know, clarify when we have Bob on the show. That's good. All right. So at the show itself, um, I was there one day. It's a three-day exhibit hall, and I was only able to be there one day because of other things happening. And so what I set out to do was look at video poker, new video poker games and slot games of skill. And Richard is going to talk about what he did. So we'll start with video poker. In video poker, basically, IGT has the vast majority of it. And the only other video poker that I saw was by Scientific Games. They showed a uh, they have a, a knockoff version of 100 play that they call 100 hand and uh, that was shown last year and I have not seen that in many uh, casinos but that is still out there so let's talk about the new video poker games at IGT now the best ones are created by videopoker.com, which just happens to be our sponsor. So we're going to talk about those first. And the best of this group is called Stack the Deck. If you're dealt three of a kind, full house or four of a kind, or four to the royal, the machine will place three, four, or five extra cards in the deck that will help you. Let's say you are dealt ace, 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 four, four. The machine will deal you extra aces. Depending on the pay schedule, sometimes they deal you five extra aces. So instead of drawing to the aces, having one out of 47 chances to get it, you now have six chances out of 52. Uh, in some games, it'll still be better to keep the full house in this case. In other games, it'll be right to just hold the aces. Figuring it out on the fly is a bit difficult, but there are so, only so many types of hands where this decision arises, and it won't be hard to figure out the best strategy for um, how to do it in all the cases. That game I thought was interesting, and I think it has a shot at being successful. Another game was called Face Card Frenzy, where you can play six coins per line or ten. Uh, the extra coins buy you extra rewards if your final hand consists of face cards, where for some reason an ace is considered a face card. So in that game, king, 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 king with a queen will pay more than king, 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 and a four. Uh, some of the lower elements on the pay schedule, such as the return for full house or flush, also change with the different amounts you play. So you're going to need a special strategy for this variation. Generally speaking, special strategies for individual games are the kiss of death. They don't usually work. They sort of work for quick quads. They definitely work for ultimate X, but most of the time they don't work. In Haywire, you bet six coins per line. And once every 12 hands, you receive a multiplier from 2x to 12x. 
averaging about 3x. That multiplier applies to that one line only. On the next hand, that multiplier moves to the next line. It doesn't have to be the same multiplier, but a multiplier moves. And on the next hand, it goes to the third line and up to the tenth line if you're playing the ten play version. Uh, so in ten play, most of the time, you're going to have one or more multipliers in effect. Should you leave before playing off these multipliers, those multipliers are readily visible and available for the next guy who comes along. Uh, you can bet there will be players who regularly check these machines for unplayed multipliers. Another game is Ultimate X Wheel Poker. The game still costs 10 coins per line, plus an extra 5 coins for the wheel. So, uh, 5 play will cost 55 coins, 10 play will cost 105 coins. You get the wheel spin for full houses, either dealt or earned. Uh, between the full houses, you're playing regular Ultimate X, where you earn the normal kind of strategies, normal kind of multipliers. But on the uh, – when you get the wheel spin, then uh, a wheel spins, and you can earn up to 20X, uh, 20 times multiplier. You can earn a, a coin amount. You could earn 2,000 coins. But the big one is 20x, and should you happen to have that on a good line, that's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I wouldn't think the strategy is going to change for this. Uh, you have a regular strategy, and the, the extra five coins is for a hand that is dealt. And then you just play it when it happens. So, uh, so it's not going to require learning additional strategies for that. There's another coin which is not uh, videopoker.com. It's by a uh, company called King Show. It's called Double Big Wheel. So it's periodically you get a wheel spin. And when you get the wheel spin, uh, you get various amounts, and that can happen in up to twice a hand. Another game, which is in cooperation with uh, Leading Edge Design, the, the makers of uh, Multi Strike, is Multi Strike Wheel Poker. Now, the way. I'm sensing a pattern here. Ah. Uh, there, uh, there are. This one, uh, you actually do pay an extra five coins on the level. The only time that wheel kicks in is when you get up to the fourth, up to the top level, and you are dealt a winning combination, which could be a pair of jacks. Um, then you get to spin a wheel, which can spin for quite a bit. Uh, so you only get the wheel spins when you already have a winning hand. So it's going to add up. The uh, At this point, I don't know the strategy of that game. The multi-strike already has four different strategies built in. But on this particular game, since you really want to get up to that top level, because that's the only place you can get the wheel spin, there's going to be a modified strategy. The inventor of that game, Leading Edge Design, uh the engineer behind that told me he would get in touch with me when they figured it out how the strategy would change and when it does I will publish that the last game is that I want that they had at IGT is Ultimate X Wheel Poker that um, pretty much uh, falls into Richard's definition of he senses a pattern you can figure out what that's all about finally they have a new version of Dream Card the old version of Dream Card, which was actually called Triple Play with Dream Card or Spin Poker with Dream Card, was what it was. It, you played six coins per line and you periodically got a Dream Card, which was the best possible card 
uh, given the first four. The new version of Dream Card is whenever the machine knows you're going to get a Dream Card, it deals three separate hands in the background, and it gives you the best one. So you are going to be getting better hands when you get the Dream Card. The way they make up for it is you get fewer Dream Cards. So they make up for it in the frequency of the Dream Cards. So it plays pretty much the same, except you get fewer Dream Cards, and more of them are good hands. The most common hand is probably three of a kind, because when you have three separate tries, there's going to be a pair in there somewhere, and the Dream Card is going to give you a three of a kind. So whether or not you can convert that to a full house or four of a kind remains to be seen. So those were the new video poker games. Many of these are two months, six months, or a year away from being found on the casino floor. I did not look at pay schedules. Pay, uh, pay schedules is... Uh, would definitely affect whether or not a game was playable. And I would also want to look at things like the slot club and the promotion and various other things to see that they added up over 100%. At a gaming show, uh, the machines are actually gaffable. So if you hit it in the right place, it will deal you a four of a kind. So you can see what the bonus looks like when you're dealt four of a kind. So if you want to rack up a score... And if you want a, a dealt full house on 10 play with the bonus, you can hit the button and you'll get it. So you can get really high scores. And it, but it doesn't really give you a feel for what the game is like. So I was basically trying to judge, is the game interesting? And um, it is sounds, there a fun It sounds yeah? like uh, all of these things add variance to these games. They yes, all, they do. Yeah, they all sound like high variance games. Well, higher variance games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, uh, the on the videopoker.com people, uh, Mike Fields, who's the vice president, who's been on the show a couple times, and his son Connor Fields, who won the Olympic race in uh, in that biking event. Uh, he, Mike is kind of an action junkie. He would never play jacks or better, but he would play double-double bonus or triple-double bonus. So the games that appeal to him, uh, and he has a big vote as to what games come out of videopoker.com, are frequently action-oriented. Just you get really high scores, heaven or hell kind of results. All right, so that's what I saw in video poker. In terms of table game New table games that might be interesting. Richard, what did you see? Well, there is a lot of uh, just ripping off old table games. Uh, lots of new side bets. Um, you know, you can find a side bet to pretty much bet on anything these days. Um, uh, and, and you know, the other thing is uh, patents, uh, you know, expire. So, you know, three-card poker is now... Uh, I think out of patent, so people can rip it off and call it something different, you know, but it's the same game basically, and they'll put their own kind of little spin on it. Now, uh, because you just never know if any of these things are ever going to see a casino floor, um, rather than go into serious detail about how these things are played or any of that, I, I just thought I would mention some that look like they have potential. <laughs> so if you do see one of these show up, eh, they might have potential. Um, so one of them is uh, called Monster Match, and um, this is sort of a new version of Spanish 21. So, um, yeah, it just had some features that made it look like, uh, you know, it had the potential to be a, a good game if you see that show up. Um Two by games. good game, what do you mean by good game? A good game for, them for are... a, a professional might find a way to exploit some of these games. Got it. Okay. Um, so there are uh, two games by a company called DR Gaming Technology, and um, these are blackjack games that 
have um, a side bet that has progressives attached to it. And, you know, as you can imagine, um, progressives, if they get high enough, they can be uh, exploitable. But in addition... Um, they have side bets. So, for example, one of them is called Blackjack 11. And it's kind of like, uh, the idea is kind of like the Lucky Ladies idea, where instead of trying to get a total of 20, you're trying to get a total of 11. So, if it's a suited 11, that's going to pay one thing. If it's, um, uh, the same color, uh, for example, a same color 11 pays 10 to 1. Uh, a um, perfect 11, which means they're both the same suit, pays 15 to 1. Um, the And then there's a progressive jackpot for, um, I believe it's the ace jack of spades and the ace king of spades, or, some, or ace king of clubs and ace king of spades. Those are two different per, um, uh, progressives. progressives, yes. Um, yeah, and, you know, some players might have a better idea of when an 11 is more likely than other times. So, um, that would be one. The And the other one is called, um, Matchmaker. And this one, your side bet, you're looking for, uh, trips. So, you know, if you get a hand like, uh, 444, you know, that would pay 250 to 1. Um... Uh, if all three of the cards are the same color, that pays 500 to 1. Um, and then you also get paid for just pairs. Uh, same suit pair is 10 to 1, same color pair is 5 to 1, mixed color is 2 to 1, but that also, I believe, has a progressive attached to it. So, um, you know, so that, that also would have, have some potential. Um, there's a game where, there's a game called, Hawaiian Island, Hawaiian Island Poker, I think it's called. Um, and this is basically, uh, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, except it's pineapple. Uh, for poker players, pineapple you're, is like Hold'em, except you're dealt three cards and you get rid of one, and then you play Hold'em. So this, you're dealt three cards, you get rid of one, and then it's Ultimate Texas Hold'em. Um, and, you know, it's dealt the same way as Ultimate Texas Hold'em. So that, that might uh, have some possibility. Um, and then there, there was another one called uh, Crisscross, which I don't know if um, uh, players, you know, in my old home games, this was a, a common uh, home poker game where there's a layout of a, a cross consisting of three cards horizontally and then... Uh, two cards vertically using the same center card to make the cross. And um, this is also basically Ultimate Texas Hold'em, um, except you're playing, you know, the, the vertical line and you're also playing the horizontal line. So you end up with five bets on the table, not counting the the, the bonus bet. Um, so, yeah, any of those games that you see, you might want to check a little bit further. Um because uh, there might be something there. Oh, you know, there was another game, um, actually, that uh, I don't know if it's much of, uh, if you could get an advantage at the game, but, um, you know, there are a lot of people who like to play Paigao Poker for comps, um, and there's a game called Face Up Paigao Poker, where the dealer's hand is dealt face up, and... Uh, the effect that this has is it greatly speeds the game up. Because if you see that you can't beat the dealer's hand, you're just throwing it away. So you don't go through all the sorting the cards and the dealer having to turn them over and go through all the rigmarole. Um, they claim that the house edge is 1.6% on that. So, um, you know, if you're a comp player, that, that might turn out to be a good game for you. Well, there are some uh, some hands in Pike Out where double dummy. You would play it one way if you knew what the. Uh, I mean, there, you have a choice as to how to play it, and knowing what the dealer has is a big advantage to. Um, 
Yes, it's right. how you play your hand. Right. Well, that's why it brings the house edge lower than what it normally would be. Yeah, because like if you're splitting pairs, sometimes it's a choice as to whether you split the pairs or keep it as two pair. And if you know what the dealer has, that yes, will make one of those much more obvious. Yes. Yep. All right. So. Uh, oh, I, while we're talking about table games, I should I should talk about the shark trap too because I went by the booth, and um and I will put a video up of this because it was very nice of them to have the machine uncovered so you could watch how it shuffles the cards. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of people are interested in how these machines work. Um, now, this particular machine, there's no, it, it does not shuffle the cards. They are not riffled. They're not put on shelves. They're, um, you know, not put in little uh, clips or anything. Uh, what this machine does is they, they they had the single deck shuffler there. And basically what it does is it says uh, pick a random uh, sort of 1 to 52 and, and then it goes and it finds each card and selects them individually and orders the deck in that order. So it truly is random. Uh, unless you could crack their you know, their seed, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not going to be exploitable. So as I say, I will be writing an article about that and, um, I, and I will put up the video, uh, which, uh, you know, you'll be able to see, uh, the other thing that was going on there that, uh, was sort of, you know, sickening was, um, you know, they have this software built into it. Th this machine supposedly, will detect any type of marked card. Um, and they, uh, the largest collection of marked cards is a guy in New York, apparently, with 5,000 decks that are marked in all different manners. And this machine is apparently able to detect every single one of them. They did not find a deck of cards, a marking on a card, that the machine could not detect as being marked. Um, and in addition to that, uh, the guy in the booth they had is a guy named Jason England, who's a very well-known magician, and he does a lot of um, magic around uh, gambling and cheating. And uh, he was demonstrating that um, the, the, the machine will determine if someone is edge-sorting the cards. So... Uh, and it didn't, it doesn't have to be the edges of the cards. Uh, he was showing someone cards that had a, uh, a flaw where it was near the logo. And, uh, you know, you would put the cards in the shuffling machine and nothing would happen, but then he would turn the cards so that all the tens were facing one way and the rest of the cards were facing another and put it in and the machine would alert that now the cards have been sorted. Um, and those alerts can go to anybody they want. Surveillance, the table games manager, the pit boss, the casino manager, anybody. Um, so in real time, this machine will detect that. Uh, that or any other kind of, uh, any kind of marking on a card. So, um, yeah, that was uh, quite an interesting thing to see. And he, they're selling them to casinos as, uh. Right now they only have the, uh, single, uh, the single deck machines which are used for poker and carnival games. And, uh, it'll handle a single or double deck if, if the, if it's a pitch game. And they expect to have the, uh, multiple deck version by, uh, middle of next year. Uh huh. Looking out for people like us. <laughs> All right. So both Richard and I also looked at video games of skill. And so we're going to talk about that next after we take a commercial break. But it's going to be much briefer than usual, as you will see. South Point is more than 10,000 games, returning more than 99%. This is more than anybody else has. Excuse me. In October, 
The casino-wide promotion is extra free play for those already getting free play. You pick up your normal free play Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and if you do, you pick up an identical amount Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If you make all eight pickups, you're eligible for a larger-than-usual pickup at the end of the month. Video poker classes are over, and we're going to start again in early January. Videopoker.com, we basically already talked quite a bit about them when we're going over the IGT uh, new games. So that takes care of the commercials. You know, uh, before we get into skill games, there's one other thing I wanted to say. Uh, uh -huh. Another trend with all these games besides sort of ripping off uh, Ultimate Texas Hold'em type things is um, there's a big trend in games that involve looking for flushes. You know, kind of. there is a game already called High Card Flush, but there are various variations of, you know, getting cards of the same suit. So that was just a trend that I happened to notice, that there were three or four of those. Um, so, you know, you may have to be counting suits. Who knows? All right. So there were s several different manufacturers for video games of skill. The one with the largest selection of games was called Gamblit. G-A-M-B-L-I-T. They had 24 games. We're not going to describe them all. The two main games they had were uh, two, three, or four people. If you wanted to play it by yourself, you had to wait till somebody else came up. And they came in two versions. One is Deal or No Deal, and the other is Pac-Man. Now, in Deal or No Deal, uh, you start by getting um, two cards, and everybody else gets two cards, and then a certain number of cards flash by, and you take the ones you want. And the ones who has the best five-card poker hand, it, by the time those cards are done, wins. That player gets a choice of they'll give him some amount of money, uh, $6.37. And that player can take that deal, or he can gamble it up and... Sometimes he'll get $0.70, cents and sometimes he'll get $32, something like that. It was actually quite a bit of fun. I have no idea what the odds are, uh, but it was kind of fun. The other game in that area was called Pac-Man, where you have these little goblin-colored creatures around, and there's up to four of you, and you're competing with each other, and sometimes your guy gets really, really big and can gobble up the other guy. Sometimes he gets really, really big. I have not played it enough to know how you get your guy big and uh, what you have to do to make that happen. But uh, the winner, uh, between the two of you, wins whatever the price is. The house keeps its rake. Now, did you see those games, Richard? Yeah, I did see those. Um, you know, the Pac-Man game had a giant screen. And um, when I say giant, I mean maybe... 10 feet by 20 feet or something closer uh, to 40 closer to 40 i think it was big yeah and and you stand at councils and i could definitely see a bunch of young people getting drunk and playing that game and having a lot of fun um you know i don't think you're going to find a way to get an advantage of that and now they also had these councils the that held three uh what looked like slot games but they have individual games and um, there might be six or eight different games on each machine, and, and they do have a skill component. So, like, one of them I played was like the game Boggle, where you're, um, you know, uh, you're, you're shown a five-by-five five grid of letters, and you're making as many words as you can. And depending on what you do, uh, you get higher scores and, and a better return. Well, I, what I thought was a better return. Now... You know, when you're talking to these people about return, a lot of times they really don't know what the hell they're talking about. But the woman I talked to, she basically said that that machine 
will hold the same whether you're a skilled player or not. Um, that it's it's all randomly generated, and if you if you uh, play better, um, you may get some extra time on the machine, but it's still going to hold the same percentage of your bet as a guy who's a horrible player. Um, the the there was another game called the only game I saw where it looked like a skilled player could actually make money um, was a game called Cannon Beard's Treasure. And the that's way a ta- this, that that was a tables game though. Uh, yeah. Or did you see it on a machine? Well, it, it's they had it both on those um, on those stand up electronic tables that you stand around with four people. That was uh-huh. one version. But then they also had a version on a table with a dealer. Uh huh. And that's the one where I th- where you could actually um, uh, a skilled player could make money. And the way this works is um, the dealer deals three cards to herself and turns them over. And uh, let's say that she has a total of 22. And now what happens is everybody has a big button in front of them. And you... um, And all players start with two cards. No, all players start with one face-up card. Two. Two. Not on this, not on this dealer dealt version. Two. Not when I yes. played it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, not when I played it. Now, hey, maybe the dealer didn't know what they were doing. I mean, that's certainly possible because these are just models that are there, right? Uh-huh. Um, but uh, anyway, she will pull a card out of the shoe and a big board tells you what that card is. And the person who hits their button first gets that card. And the object of the game is to be the first person to get the same total as the dealer without going over. And let's say there are five players at the table and we each bet $5. That $25 goes into a pool and whoever gets the same total as the dealer first without busting, they win that $25. And the, now where's the house edge? Well, in addition to the main bet, you're forced to make a, a side bet, which they told me has a 9% house edge. But I could easily see that if you were good at this game, like, you know, if you're playing with just random people who haven't played before, you could win this game every time, I think. So um, now the downside of the game is you need other pe- First of all, Everybody has to bet the same amount, which means they're probably going to be betting very low stakes. Um, and second of all, if you just win every time, they're going to get tired of the game very quickly. So if you're good at social engineering, you know, it's a lot like pool hustling. <laughs> you know, you might have to, uh, you know, like if you were a hot girl, you could probably make a lot of money at this game. The there are actually two different bets you could make up with the nine percent house edge, and you could bet the over or the under. Um, clearly, you only want to bet the one you're forced to, but there was there was two there were two you could make, and uh, good in Aruze, A U R no A R U Z E. There was a game that looked like it was a skill-based game, but they said it wasn't. And this was a uh, Chinese guy who, excuse me, Japanese, and there was a language difference between it, so I'm not real sure. But the gist of the game was you had this hammer, like a carnival game, where you hit the button On a carnival game, something rises up depending on how hard you hit it. In this game, strength is not an issue. But there is a pendulum kind of thing, metronome kind of thing, back and forth and back and forth very fast. And one spot on there is called the sweet spot. If you hit the button just right, then, and you get it on the sweet spot, then you get lots of extra money. If you miss it, 
then then you miss it. So it looks like you have it's a game of skill. He says it isn't. It just looks that way, and they know how close you're going to get to it before you even hit the button. So those of you who are tempted to try, because um, you have real good hand-eye coordination, try something else. Uh, there was another game in Konami. K-O-N-A-M-I. Uh, one is called Beat the Square. This is kind of like Whack-A-Mole. You have a grid of 16 squares, 4x4, four four, and a song plays, and on the 16 lights step up and you got to hit the button just right and when it shows up you have to hit it immediately and uh, i played it in the tournament mode there were uh there are eight machines and i didn't come in eighth but i was helped out by the fact that there are only six players on that round and i came in six so i was just uh did not have a clue as to how to play it Pres- there was one guy who uh, kept playing it. He played it over and over again, and he was he was on top. So there's clearly an element of skill in there, and at least in the tournament version, you could play it enough so you get good enough to do well in tournaments. Uh, what the house edge would be in the non-tournament mode, I have no idea. Did you see that one, Richard? Uh, I did not see that one, no. Um also in the Konami booth was a game called Frogger, F-R-O-G-G-E-R. This is, you have this frog, green thing, that has to climb up something, and you move it around on the grid, avoiding certain traps. And there's target amounts, and if you, it, it was set up so you had a $2 bet, and if you got this level, you got $8.14, and that level you got such and such and that level you got such and such so the guy who was demonstrating it um uh, you had to get in like 700 a score of 700 to get the bonuses and on a good day a good score for him was 500 and he didn't uh do well he informed me he was the best player in the company uh so nobody played better than him and the scores were set to to win on it you needed to be better than the best player who works at Konami. So that told me how hard I should try, which is not at all. <laughs> so um, so that was Konami. There was another set of games at Game Co. G-A-M-E-C-O. I could not understand these games. Apparently they are out in casinos now. The, uh, they were describing it to people, and they were just everybody wanted to find out, and I could not get close enough to hear. So, Richard, did you stop by GameCo? I did not. I did not. I would there. like to talk about the game that I actually that actually looked like something I wanted to play, but the but the line was so long that I never got to play it. Um, Please. And that that was it was at IGT. And it was a it was a driving game, and it looked. I mean, you sit in a car, and it and it's got three screens in front of you, um, you know, panorama style, and it looks just like you're playing an Xbox or PlayStation driving game. And the seat would tilt to the left and tilt to the right on the curves. Um, you have three pedals. They said uh, the guy said you could add a stick shift to this if you wanted. You could also change the game and make it a flight simulator. And, um, you know, it just looked like a lot of fun to play. They had two of them there, and they had it set up where you're playing against the guy in the, in the, in the other seat, in the other car, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, so that, again, that's like a tournament mode kind of thing where you, you could uh, presumably have you know, six of these and every and all the money goes in a pot and the casino takes some rake. Um, but that looked like the most fun game to play that I saw. The other thing I saw that was really interesting, and I, I don't know that, um, you know, that this game is going to be beatable. Well, there are many of these games, but uh, the thing that I thought was uh, interesting and, and smart was 
uh, IGT had this whole bunch of games, and they're, they allow you to download an app on your phone so you can play these games at home. And uh, just like My Vegas, you know, you can earn comps by playing these games at home. Um, and, and, and you get better. You, you attain, obtain levels in the game, like any kind of video game. When you go to the casino, you basically log in with your phone and your account is in the slot machine. So if you're already at level 12, you're at level 12 when you play the game for real money in the casino. Um, so I thought that was really smart and I, I bet we will see a lot of that. Um, and like my and like my Vegas, if you wanted to get more chances or more powerful dragons or something, you can pay real money and buy them. Yes. And that and that money is split somehow between IGT and uh and the casino. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? While we're on the subject of phones, there's two other things that I saw that I think uh, uh, were noteworthy. Um, uh-huh. One is a company that um, allows you to bet on your phone in the casino on, for example, a real roulette wheel. So you download their app on your phone and you're seeing the roulette wheel that is there in the casino and you can bet on it on your phone. Now, you could be standing five feet away from the wheel and do this. Or you could be up in your room or at the swimming pool or maybe anywhere in Nevada. I don't know. Um, but it's not online gaming. I, I think you might have to be on the property to do this. But um, anyway, so I, I thought that was interesting. Um, and, you know, who knows where that may lead. And the, the other thing that uh, I thought was important was uh, a guest, a very popular guest that we had on, Buddy Frank, who was a, uh, a slot uh, a manager. Um, at various places for many, many years. Uh, he has a recent article at CDC Gaming that um, basically players' cards are going away. You know, in the near future, you will be using your phone as your players' card. And uh, so there are both good and bad aspects to that, um, but, but that is what's coming, and it just makes sense, you know, that, that they would go to that. So if I wanted to play on my phone and Bonnie's phone, I need two phones. Well, maybe. I mean, for example, on my phone, I can switch users. You know, if if I want to, um, you know, log in to my wife's account on my phone, I can do that. So I don't know if that'll work in a casino, but but um, it might. Okay, you have an Android. I have an iPhone. I don't think they have that option on iPhone. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Apple <laughs> products suck. <laughs> yes, you're, you're always a big fan of those. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we uh, it was a fun gaming show, lots of walking around. Um, and, uh, and that's it for this week. Uh, thank you, Richard. This was fun. And uh, go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day. <laughs>